Hello and welcome everyone. In a race against a cabbage, who is the winner? The cabbage, of course, because it is ahead. Now that that is out of the way, today's recipe is sure to be unbelievable. Wow, I'm on a roll. A cabbage roll, that is. Today we are going to be conquering cabbage rolls. These delicious cabbage leaves stuffed with meaty goodness and braised in tomato soup are a wonderful comfort food. They're not terribly difficult to make, but they do require quite a bit of patience. So it's definitely a recipe you want to start early in the day, not at the last minute. Ask me how I know. For today's recipe, you will need one large white cabbage, you want the cabbage to be as large as possible, but still able to be fully submerged in boiling water in a large stock pot. One pound of ground beef, one pound of ground pork, one cup of uncooked rice, which will turn into about three cups of cooked rice, three quarters of a cup of tomato sauce, one egg, though this is entirely optional and just acts as a binder to help hold together the filling. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one to two teaspoons of ground marjoram, one to two teaspoons of paprika, plain, not smoked, one to two teaspoons of black pepper, and one teaspoon of salt. Lastly, you will need two cans of tomato soup. The first thing we need to do is prepare our cabbage. We need to remove the core from the head of the cabbage, then plop it into some salted, boiling water. Then we let it boil until the leaves become tender and pull away from the head easily. Depending on the size of the cabbage, this can take quite a long time. As it boils, I like to remove the leaves that become loose, then let the rest of the head of cabbage continue boiling for a while before I try to remove any more. While the cabbage is boiling, you want to cook your rice. I cook my rice in a rice cooker, because it's far better at reliably cooking the rice than I am. Next for the filling we need to cook our ground beef in a pan on the stove. You want to make sure the beef is fully cooked. If your ground beef is pretty fatty, you can dump the meat into a metal strainer to drain off the excess fat before adding it to a large mixing bowl. Then cook the ground pork in the same way. Again, if needed, drain the fat from the ground pork before adding it to the mixing bowl. Once the beef and pork are cooked, you can add in your rice and mix them all together. I find doing this by hand makes breaking up the clumps of rice quite a bit easier than trying to do it with a spoon. When the rice and meat are all well mixed, you can add the tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, paprika, marjoram, pepper, and salt. Then give everything another good mix. Once everything is mixed, taste it, and if needed, add more spices. Finally and optionally, we can beat the egg and mix it in, just to help hold the filling together in the rolls. Now before moving on, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to get it prepared for the cabbage rolls. Once the cabbage leaves have all been removed from the head, we will want to remove some of the stem from each leaf. I find the best way to do this is by taking a pair of scissors and cutting a V out of the stem. This just helps to prevent having a large fibrous chunk of the stem in the rolls. Now mix together two cans of tomato soup with two cans of water and set it aside for a moment. Then we want to line a baking pan with a few of the largest or most broken cabbage leaves. This layer will make sure that our rolls do not stick to the bottom of the pan while they're cooking. Once the pan is lined, be sure to pour in some of the tomato soup just to lightly cover the leaves. Now we can begin working on the rolls. I like to take a quarter cup measuring cup and scoop out some of the filling into the middle of a leaf. To roll the leaf, I fold over the stem side, tuck the filling in, then I bring in both sides and roll the whole thing over. Depending on the size of the leaf, you can add more or less filling as needed. Once the roll is complete, I place it in the pan with the seam side down so that the roll doesn't accidentally pop open while it's cooking. Depending on your cabbage leaves, you may end up with some leftover filling if you do, you can refrigerate it and use it at a later time. Once all of the rolls have been made and are placed in the pan, we are going to pour over the rest of the tomato soup to make sure they are all at least partially submerged in liquid. This is important as the liquid will help the cabbage to finish cooking and become nice and tender. 
The final step I like to do is place some cabbage leaves over the top of the cabbage rolls. This will help to keep in the moisture and steam. Finally, cover the whole pan with aluminium foil. Now the worst part of the whole process, waiting. We are going to cook the cabbage rolls in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for at least one hour. Then we are going to check on them. The cooking time varies greatly, so there is no concrete answer for how long it will take. My advice is after the first hour, check them roughly every 15 to 30 minutes until the cabbage is tender and the inside has hit at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we have them, the finished cabbage rolls. As I mentioned earlier, they are a tasty blend of meaty goodness and tomatoey brightness all wrapped up tightly in a cabbage leaf, making them a delightful comfort food. Be careful though, as they are very hot inside when they come out of the oven. Now I hope you'll give this recipe a try. If you have any comments, suggestions, or ideas for future videos, be sure to leave them down below. If you like this video, then be sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.